Okay, guys, welcome back to another Med Math Monday. I hope you guys had a great week. Um, we're going to go ahead and get right in. If you haven't downloaded my Dutch's Calculations cheat sheet, I'm going to go ahead and leave the link down below. This is a cheat sheet that I made with the common units and conversions that you'll be using um, to solve most of your dosage Calculations questions. So I did leave some questions down in the description box in my last video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link a little eye in the sky and a link down below in the description box where you can go ahead and watch that first so that you can go ahead and follow along once you've given those questions a try. So the questions that I left down below reads as prescription is etomethacine 20 milligrams by mouth every morning. And our supply is indomethacin oral suspension at 25 milligrams per 5 milliliters. How much will you give each morning? So we're looking for per dose. So we're going to go ahead and write our order or our prescription, which is 20 milligrams PO every morning. And our supply is 25 milligrams per 5 milliliters. So we are looking for milliliters because based on how much mill, how many milliliters are in how many milligrams are in each milliliter, we'll be able to determine how many milliliters we need based on the prescription or the order. So we're going to go ahead and put our unit that we need. So what in our given has milliliters right here? Our supply. So if we we're going to go ahead and use the five milliliters and whatever is next to it will come with it. So 5 milliliters over 25 milligrams. Now remember, whatever unit you have down here has to come up here. Milligrams. What in our given data do we have that has milligrams that we haven't used yet? Our order, 20 milli milligrams. So that goes here. And then this is per dose every morning. So we're just going to go ahead and put 1 and we're going to go ahead and multiply across. So 5 times 20 is 100. And 25 times 1 is 25. Now go ahead and cross out your units to make sure that we have exactly what we're looking for. I like to do that before I multiply, but I'm so used to like knowing how to do it. So I apologize in advance that I didn't um, cross out my units, but I would do that um, in the beginning just to make sure that you have all your units that you need in order. All right, so we're going to go ahead and divide 100 by 25, and that gives us 4, and we're looking for milliliters, milliliters, so that is it. We have to give 4 milliliters per the order. The next question I left was a prescription reads, um, the patient needs valparic acid 400 milligrams by mouth now. The pharmacy sends up valporic acid oral syrup, which equals to 250 milligrams per 5 milliliters. How much valporic acid will you give? All right, so our supply, our order, I'm sorry. Our order is 400 milligrams PO now. Our supply is oral syrup. which equals to 250 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Can you guys see that? There we go. So we are looking for milliliters because based on what, um, how many milliliters, milligrams are in each milliliter, that will determine our milliliters and how many milligrams the need, the need is for the prescription. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, we were looking for milliliters, so we're going to go ahead and put milliliters here. So what in our given has milliliters? Our supply does. So whatever um, milliliters, we're going to go ahead and put it here. I like to make sure that all our units match up. So if milliliters is here, milliliters is here. If uh, grams is here, grams is here, and so forth. So whatever um, comes with five f milliliters is going to go ahead and come um, along for the ride. We're going to put it down below because it is, it goes with it. It's, it's, it's one number, but
but broken up into um, milliliters and milligrams because there is a certain amount of milligrams per milliliter. And whatever unit is down here has to come up here, so milligrams. So what in our given already has milligrams that we haven't used? Our order does. We're going to go ahead and use 400. And it's uh, one dose, so I'm just going to put one down here. And we're going to go ahead and multiply across. So 5 milliliters times 400 equals um, 2,000, right? 2,000. I think it's 2,000. I'm bad at math, and I don't have a calculator with me. And then 250 times 1 is 250. I think that's right. <laughs> and let me make sure because math and me have never been friends. But for some reason, Dozer's calculations and me are best friends. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So 400 times 5. Yes, 2,000. Okay, good. <laughs> I got it right. And then we're going to go ahead and divide it by 2,000. Divide by 250 equals 8. 8. And our unit that we're looking for? Milliliters. Because these cancel out. So I hope you were able to go ahead and follow along with that um, from the last video. And we're going to go ahead and get to something a little more complicated. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my sheet so that we can go ahead and look. And let's go ahead and you, we'll do, some of these are really easy still. All right, let's see. So we're going to go ahead and do some that are a little more difficult. Um, we're going to go ahead and do some IV infusion uh, questions using dimensional analysis. So the first question that we're going to go ahead and read is reads as the healthcare provider asks how many units per hour of heparin your patient is receiving. The IV pump is set to 20 milliliters per hour. The solution hanging is heparin to 20,000 units per 500 milliliters of D5W. How many units an hour is your patient receiving? All right, so I'm going to keep this nearby. So we're going to go ahead and write down our given information. So right now the patient is receiving 20 milliliters per hour. And in the bag, in the bag, there is 20,000 units per 500 milliliters. And how many milliliters uh, per, or how many units per hour is your patient receiving? So, so we need to find out units per hour. So how many, where's our units? What do we have as for units in our given? We have 20,000 units. So we're going to go ahead and use that. 20,000 units. And we know that in 20,000 units, whatever's connected to it will go down below. So 500 milliliters. And whatever comes up from down here has to go up here, so milliliters. What in our given data has milliliters? Well, 20 does. That's how much the patient is receiving per hour. So we're going to put 20, and whatever the 20 is attached to, the um, same has to come down below. So one hour. I hope that makes sense, you guys. Let me know if it doesn't so I can clarify. And we're going to go ahead and just cancel out any units. We don't need milliliters, milliliters. We need units and hours. So we have hour and we have units. Those are the exact units that we are looking for. So we're going to go ahead and use our calculator. I suggest that you get like a basic calculator because they most likely will not let you use a smartphone during your exam. So we're just going to go ahead and 20,000 times 20 equals 400,000. And we're going to go ahead and multiply 500 times 1 is 500. 
and we're going to divide 400,000 divided by 500 equals 800 units per hour. So that is the answer there. It's a little more complicated, a little some different verbiage that we're not used to. We're going to go ahead and do one more. Okay, so the healthcare provider orders for the client with a DVT to begin a heparin drip at 500 units per hour. The pharmacy supplies 20,000 units of heparin in 500 milliliters of D5W. What would you set the IV pump rate to in milliliters per hour? So our um, given data is 500 units per hour. And the supply is 20,000 units of heparin in a 500 milliliter bag of D5W. And what would you set the IV pump rate to in milliliters per hour? So that's what we're looking for, milliliters per hour. So what in our given has milliliters already? Right here. 500 milliliters. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. And whatever that is attached to it has to go with it. So 20,000 units. So whatever's down here has to go up here. So units. What in our given has units that we haven't used yet? Right here, 500. And whatever that is attached to has to go with it. So it's going to go down below per hour. So we're going to go ahead and multiply straight across. So let's go ahead and get our cal calculator. We need to use our calculator because we don't want to do our math wrong. So we're going to do 500 times 5, 500 times 500 equals 250,000 over 20,000 because it's 20 times so we're going to go ahead and divide by 20,000 and our units are 12.5 milliliters per hour. That is your answer. So say for instance, the, your question says round to the nearest whole number. Well, just like our rounding rules that we reviewed in our first, in my second uh, MedMath Monday, you're going to use here. So say it says round to the whole number. So you're going to go ahead and look at the number to the right of the decimal. If it's more than 5, you're going to round up. If it's less than 5, this number is going to stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and look to our neighbor. If it's more than 5, it rounds up. This number rounds up. If it is less than five, this number stays the same. So with our rounding rules, the number is more than five and more. So we're gonna go ahead and round up. So we end up with 13 milliliters. I hope that clarifies, up, cl clarifies a little bit about, um, you know, using milliliters per hour and a little bit of, uh, you know, a different supply as far as medications concerned, we're using actual like drips and um, IVs and whatnot, as opposed to tablets or milligrams. Uh, this you will see a lot in the clinical setting. Um, very important that we do use uh, caution with our drips or any medication for that matter. So make sure that um, you do review your um, five rights as far as medication. I think it's 10 rights nowadays. Um, right patient, right dose, right order, right med all that good stuff, um, because you can see how easily a mistake can be give, made if you, uh, you know, don't calculate correctly. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and stop there. I'm going to go ahead and leave some practice questions down below in the description box for next week. If you have any questions on specific questions that you're kind of struggling with, leave them in the comment box below, and I will try to get back to you with how I would do it using dimensional analysis. It can be very tricky sometimes. It just takes a lot of practice. I'll go ahead and leave some practice questions for next week. Make sure you stop by, ring that notification bell, subscribe, join to the family, and I'll see you in my next video.